Hello, I am Dr. Harvey Abrams. I am speaking to you from the Stonewall National Museum and Archives located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome to Archives Alive. Today, I'm going to be speaking about an episode that took place in of all places right here in Florida, an episode that is chronicled in one of the thousands of files located here in the archives. The year was 1956, and the United States was navigating some troubled waters. We were embroiled in a Cold War with the Soviet Union, and the state was in high anxiety as a result of claims coming from the mouths of Senator Joseph McCarthy of Wisconsin and from the director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, that the United States was under attack from two separate but connected threats, one communists and the other homosexuals. While neither claim was true, they nevertheless sent waves of hysteria throughout a nation that believed that the democratic American way of life and its moral foundations were under attack. Taking advantage of the national panic, the Florida State Legislature formed a committee known as the Johns Committee after its chairman, Senator Charlie Johns, ostensibly to investigate communist infiltration into the state. In actuality, its real intent, its real intent was quite different. What it wanted to do was to put a stop to the integration of public schools in Florida. And it thought it could do so by discrediting the most powerful black civil rights group in the state, the NAACP, by drumming up evidence that the NAACP was secretly being funded by communists. The committee was doomed from the start. First of all, there weren't any communists to find. But more importantly, they ran into this guy, Thurgood Marshall, the NAACP's chief legal counsel and future Supreme Court justice, who refused to be bullied by the Johns Committee heavy-handed and oftentimes illegal uh, intimidation tactics. But the members of the Johns Committee had no intention of stopping. It had a McCarthy moment and simply pivoted from investigating the NAACP to investigating homosexuals. By the time by the, this particular time, the American public had already been well indoctrinated into believing that homosexuals were not only communist sympathizers, but worse, there were sexual perverts, sinners, child molesters, and recruiters of young children in, into its immoral way of life. And thus the Johns Committee made the rooting out of homosexuals from Florida's universities and public schools the singular aim of its investigations. For nine years, the Johns Committee, officially known as the Florida Legislative Investigative Committee, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for the most part, uh, conducted its business behind closed doors, operating in secret until almost nine years later in 1964, it be, after it began its work, it published a pamphlet, widely known as the Purple Pamphlet, which was entitled Homosexuality and Citizenship in Florida, which got distributed to all state legislators and officials. For 25 cents, it could be obtained by the general public. It was intended to be educational and contained sections on what to do about homosexuality and the reasons why Floridians needed to be concerned about it. Without question, the committee's members were proud of their publication and fully expected to receive high praise for it. Instead, legislators were shocked by it, for the report also contained a comprehensive glossary of sexual and fetishistic terms, as well as explicit photos, including those of children, which were seen as blatantly pornographic, obscene, and offensive. The Johns Committee was cut off from its funding and in disgrace ended its tenure less than a year later. What the Johns Committee had been doing for all those years was still as yet unknown. It wasn't until almost 30 years later that the official documents of the Johns Committee were made open to the public. It was only then that historians, journalists, and reporters could finally comb through over 30,000 pages of material. What they found has since been presented primarily in various local magazines and newspaper articles, uh, TV exposés, and documentaries. They, revo they revealed an untold sordid tale 
of a state sanctioned campaign that spied on, entrapped, interrogated, and intimidated professors, teachers, and students at Florida's schools. A witch hunt which had little regard for the law and which carelessly trampled on the civil liberties of the people they were elected to serve. Specifically, the documents reveal that the Johns Committee hired undercover investigators to patrol university bathrooms, parks, bars, and other places where homosexuals, primarily men, were known to congregate in order not only to spy on the men's activities, but to lure them into compromising behaviors, which, would then, which they would then write up and submit to the Johns Committee. The documents further showed that the committee paid college students to spy on their fellow students and to engage them, if necessary, into performing homosexual sex acts, which they would then report to investigators. The documents revealed that once investigators identified homosexuals or those they suspected of being homosexual, they authorized campus police to confront them, sometimes in the middle of class or in their dormitories, and escort them to police headquarters where investigators interrogated, threatened, and pressured them into admitting their own guilt and into giving the names of others they knew to be homosexual. There's one document which told of a young woman who was jailed for over one year for refusing to admit that she was a lesbian and for refusing to give the names of other lesbians she knew. Everything the investigators found got written up and submitted to the Johns Committee, which would meet in effect to determine and target, uh, to determine a targeted individual's fate, whether they, whether they would be retained, fired, expelled, jailed, or publicly exposed. There was no counsel present, no opportunity to deny accusations, and no opportunity to confront one's accusers. You see, unlike the NAACP, gays and lesbians at that time had no national organization to come to their defense. Over the nine years of the committee's existence, it appears that hundreds and possibly thousands of Floridians were brought up before the Johns Committee, either in person or through written reports. We know that over 100 professors and public school teachers were fired and that countless students were expelled, and that many cases were still pending at the time the Johns Committee was shut down. The exact number of Floridians whose lives were impacted, some irreparably ruined, will never be known as the, known as the names of all persons subjected to its reign of terror were redacted from the pages of transcripts and investigators' reports. The Johns Committee, ostensibly created to protect to protect Floridians from communism was instead used as a weapon against Floridians. As one newspaper columnist wrote, it was nothing more than a group of high level gay bashing good old boys. Just last year, an elected official sponsored a resolution which if passed would have authorized the state legislature to issue a formal apology to the nameless victims of the Johns Committee. As of today, there has been no sign that the legislature has any interest in digging up a dark chapter in Florida's history or to apologize. And so it is left up to us to remember. This is Dr. Harvey Abrams from the Stonewall National Museum and Archives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thanks for tuning in.